I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade. Cue the music. This drunken little German munch. Not yet. He's intoxicated with himself. That is the often accusation, yeah. Sober him. Lighten up, Francis. Right now, Francis. Sober him. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade, a weekly theological podcast where we sit down at the kitchen table, we grab ourselves an ice-cold, tasty adult beverage, and we discuss theology. Lutheran Lemonade, to gladden the heart of man. I have been away for, what, a month has it been? Uh, Yeah, Uh, I have missed the podcast, I have missed my YouTube channel, I'm happy to say that I am back. So you can find Lutheran Lemonade at soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade. It airs every Thursday evening, unless, of course, circumstances dictate that I can't record. And this past month, they certainly did. Uh, Thursday evening, soundcloud.com forward slash Lutheran Lemonade, or you can find it on YouTube at youtube.com at 1517 Films. Just look for 1517 with the word films below it in a blue circle, and you've got me. That airs on YouTube on Friday. You can watch the podcast. You can sit down and watch as we have today our Bible open. We have a beer. We're at the kitchen table. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about, well, it's a two-kingdom issue. Interesting. I never, I never connected this. It's a two kingdom issue: the kingdom of of government, of civil authority, the kingdom of the world, and the kingdom of grace, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of the church. And how, as citizens of both, are we to act when it seems like the kingdom of the world? is imposing restrictions upon the kingdom of the church. And I say it's interesting that this is a two-kingdom theology issue because what we're talking about is a local hair salon in my area called Kingdom Cuts. It's in the city of Appleton, Wisconsin. And if you peruse the Facebook page of Kingdom Cuts, you will see that they have been open during the coronavirus pandemic. Now, in the state of Wisconsin, Governor Tony Evers is presiding. Governor Tony Evers is a Democrat. He was rightly elected to the position of governor. I didn't vote for him. Uh, I voted for the other guy. Uh, (laughs) uh, On a personal level, I happen to think um, that he's about as useless as tits on a bull. Uh, But, but... Tony Evers is my governor. I live in the state of Wisconsin. That makes Tony Evers my governor. I don't have to like it, but it's true. And why would I say that? Well, we're going to dive into the word of God to determine why I would say something like that. I didn't vote for the guy. I think he's a waste of flesh. But he's the governor. He's my governor. He is uh, the one whom God has put in charge over the state in which I live. Now, During this coronavirus pandemic, Governor Evers issued what he called a safer at home order. Basically, oh, that beer is good. Basically, it was a uh, state of emergency kind of scenario. Governors have the authority to do that. One of many businesses that were affected by this as being deemed non essential. Which, if you're watching the video on Friday, uh, <laughs> take a peek. Uh, I think hair salons are essential. Um, one of hair salons, not essential. They have to close. Now, as I was looking into this, because I saw the article yesterday, and I'm going to read you the article about this hair salon in Appleton, Wisconsin, called Kingdom Cuts. Kingdom Cuts is suing the governor and a couple other people because. The safer at home order violated her First Amendment rights to free exercise of religion. You heard me correctly. The owner of a hair salon, I won't name her by name on the show, so we'll just call her Karen, is suing the government because this safer at home order, which the governor had... Let's talk about the safer at home order. The Supreme Court of the state of Wisconsin, just uh, on the day of this recording, on the 11th of May, has ruled 
against the governor's extension of the safer at home order ruling that it is unlawful he played down and dirty with it he went around and and found some loopholes to extend extend safer at home and the supreme court of the state of wisconsin decided no no you don't get to do that so wisconsin's back open for business uh and they have i don't remember how long they have to determine how we're going to do it how we're going to go about it but everyone's best interest is at mind but so safer at home salons not essential i look at look at my hair watch the video on friday if you're listening on thursday uh, and tell me that hair salons aren't essential but karen's hair salon kingdom cuts was deemed non-essential by the governor and so the safer at home order was put in place she's supposed to close she stayed open. The police showed up and insisted that she, look, there's a safer at home order. This has been ruled a non-essential business. Whether or not I agree with that, not the point. She stayed open. In preparing for this episode, I went to the Facebook page for Kingdom Cuts and saw yesterday, yesterday, that a parent had posted a picture of their child. Finally found a place that was open that I could get my kid's hair cut. Good call, Karen. Now, I am of two minds on this issue. I'm, I'm actually quite conflicted on the issue. The, the patriot in me, the conservative in me, uh, the, the, the liberty-loving part of me is like, do it. Stick it to the man. You get him, Karen. That's the only time I'm ever going to support a Karen. Like, just stick it to the man. The government doesn't get to tell you that you can't provide for your family to hell with stone with uh, stony evers tony evers to hell with them you get them karen that's the patriot and the liberty lover in me the christian in me and kingdom cuts claims that they are a christian ministry and we'll get to that the christian in me remembers romans 13 so let's i got my bible here Let's read Romans 13, and then we'll continue talking. Romans 13, beginning at verse 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Romans 13, 1-7 through so the patriot in me says, stick it to the man, Karen. You don't, don't let him deprive you of your rights, your liberties. These are paramount. Benjamin Franklin said, he who would sacrifice liberty for safety shall have or deserve neither. And I firmly believe that quote to the core of my being, but I am a Christian. And so is Karen. No, it, it's, that's not her real name. I just... It's my, I used to work at a call center, so Karen is my go-to name. Um, and I can tell you exactly what kind of haircut she has, too. Um, Karen, I want you to stick it to the man as a patriot, as an American, as a red, white, and blue-blooded American. I want you to stick it to Governor Evers. Because the government cannot infringe upon your right to life, to liberty, and your pursuit of happiness. These are, are paramount. And as Karen is claiming in her lawsuit against the governor 
they this stay at home order, the safer at home order, uh, violated her First Amendment rights. So let's get to the article, and then we'll talk some more. Because I'm I'm just chasing every sort of 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 <laughs> rabbit trail uh, that I can possibly chase here. So let's move the microphone a little bit. All right. So from Fox 11 News, WLUK. Appleton, Wisconsin, the owner of a city hair salon filed a federal lawsuit Tuesday challenging Governor Tony Evers' safer-at-home order. Karen, owner of Kingdom Cuts, named Governor Evers, Appleton's police chief, police chief Todd Thomas, and DHS Secretary uh, Designee Andrea Palm. The suit has not been served on any of the defendants, and none have filed a formal response. The Wisconsin Department of Justice did not immediately respond to Fox 11's request for comment. According to the website for the business, quote, Kingdom Cuts is a Christian-based kids' salon that focuses on giving quality haircuts and helping make special memories for the whole family, end quote. That's important later. In the lawsuit, Karen describes the salon as a ministry, adding Miss... Karen Karenson sincerely believes that she is to share her faith with others through her work at Kingdom Cuts. And that's a quote uh, from Miss Karenson. Appleton police visited the salon and informed her of the details of the order, which currently prohibits hair salons, plural, from opening. A cease and desist order was delivered to her with information the case was being referred to the district attorney for possible charges, the suit states. Appleton Police spokesperson Officer Megan Cash confirmed to Fox 11 that the agency had received complaints about the salon and officers did visit. No citations were issued. No criminal charges have been filed, court records show. The 14-page federal lawsuit argues that state's order violates Karen's right to exercise religion, her freedom of assembly, her freedom of speech, and violates the Equal Protection Clause. Also, the suit claims the order provisions make it virtually impossible, if not outright impossible, to gather the signatures necessary for a recall in the time allotted. The suit asks for restraining order to prevent the the safer at home provisions from being enforced and unspecified monetary damages. So that's the article. (sighs) So... The safer at home order had been issued by Governor Tony Evers and Miss Karenson, Karen Karenson, as we're going to call her in this episode, kept her salon open at, uh, uh, up until yesterday, uh, according to her Facebook page. And the police showed up and said, hey, hey, you need to close. She stayed open. Now she's suing. Uh, and she's... No, I, I want to... Where, what is she suing for? The order violates Karen's right to exercise religion, her freedom of assembly, her freedom of speech, and violates the Equal Protection Clause. Now, probably, probably freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, and Equal Protection Clause. So, so she's got some arguments. She's got some teeth, okay? She's not completely off of her rocker. As a conservative, I look at these stay-at-home, savor-at-home orders, and I'm like, mm, when's the last time anyone's read 1984? But that doesn't matter because in the kingdom of the church, all of Romans 13, we are called to obey the civil authorities. So as an example, um, churches not being forced to close have chose, based on police guidance and all of that, uh, to close. Now, there are examples of churches fighting back against their governments, and and good for them. Uh, Churches that uh, the congregants could meet in the parking lot, stay in their cars, and listen to the church service on the radio. These churches that the police came after have every right to go after their government, and restraining orders against the police have been issued by the government, but this is not a freedom of religion issue, and I'll prove it. So she describes Kingdom Cuts as a ministry. So 
Let's go to the website, Kingdom Cuts. We're at their website. Here's what the website says. First thing, right when you get on their page. Kingdom Cuts is a Christian-based kids salon that focuses on giving quality haircuts and helping make special memories for the whole family. When your child walks into Kingdom Cuts, they will enter an extraordinary environment and have an exclusively unique experience than they would in any other salon. With an exceptional kid-friendly atmosphere, a fun kids' chair, movies, and more, and of course, outstanding service from experienced, friendly staff. In addition to the many hair services offered, Kingdom Cuts offers a selection of parties for both your handsome prince and your beautiful princess. We also carry professional kids' hairlines, uh, ladybugs, and fairy tales. <laughs> Let's go to the services that they provide. Because this is a ministry, right? So, so what, what, what kind of ministry is this, right? What kind of Christian ministry is this? Children's haircuts, teens, bang trims, boys' necks. Uh, first haircut with certificate. Uh, there's a whole list. A mini mani, mini pedi, polish, adult manicure, uh, men's haircuts, uh, waxing, ear piercing, deep conditioning treatment, haircut and polish. Uh, updo or haircut polished. What uh, I don't understand. Tutu tiara and makeup and the, your own lip gloss. Updo and polish. Uh, updo mini mani, uh, lip gloss, uh, lotion. You read through this whole list of services that this mini this ministry provides. You know, only on the front page uh, did I see. Oh, Kingdom Cuts is a Christian based kid salon. Okay. Uh, so that so working for and this is cited this is cited in the lawsuit this was quoted in the article this part of the website kingdom cuts is a christian based kid salon that focuses on giving quality haircuts and helping make special memories for the whole family now i'm going to go to a church website uh this is the website for uh my son's school which is attached to a church Trinity Lutheran Church and School is a fellowship of Lutheran Christians who are part of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and this Wisconsin community. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit and invested in the Word of God, which allows us to encourage, strengthen, and renew the faith of adults and children. We proudly proclaim the saving work of Jesus Christ and share his love with those who do not know him as their Savior. That's a ministry. We proudly proclaim the saving work of Jesus Christ and share his love with those who do not know him as their savior. Kingdom Cuts. Kingdom Cuts is a Christian-based kid salon that focuses on giving quality haircuts and helping make special memories for the whole family. You're not a ministry, Karen. And, and, you, you are a Christian. I am not in a position to say you're not. So seeing as how you're a Christian, Karen, go back and read Romans 13. I know, I know every red, white, and blue fiber of my being says don't do this. But the Bible says obey the governing authorities. And here's another biblical example. When Christianity was made illegal by Rome, and Christians were being killed and persecuted, fed to lions and crucified and stoned and filleted and boiled. When the religious leaders of the temple, likewise with Rome, were saying, do not under any circumstance, any circumstance, do not preach the name of Jesus Christ. The apostle said, very calmly, very courteously, very politely, we must obey God rather than man. Karen, I want you to hear me. <laughs> Governor Tony Evers did not tell you not to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. He didn't. The Safer at Home order does not restrict your exercise of religion. I've read several other articles on the issue stating that, well, you know, I can't go to church. Well, neither can I, Karen, but my church is streaming it online. Other churches are streaming it online. I've gone to more church services since this quarantine started because churches which have an actual word and sacrament ministry 
have switched tactics so that they could do two things at the same time. Proclaim Christ and him crucified for you and the forgiveness of your sins and that they could obey the governing authorities. Obey the safer at home order. Obey the social distancing. The Christian church at large, barring a few charismatic exceptions, has still proclaimed Christ crucified, still functioned according to their ministries while obeying the civil authorities. Okay? You're not a ministry. You, you can say that, and, and you can say it long enough and loud enough and often enough, but that doesn't make it true. You cut hair for profit. If you cut hair for profit and a state of emergency is declared and your governor says you're not essential for the, stand, for the time of this state of emergency, close your shop. As a God-fearing Christian woman, Karen, close your shop. I get it. It sucks. It really does. And the patriot in me is entirely empathetic towards that. But the Christian in me says that your obligation is not to engage in a frivolous lawsuit, which, by the way, Karen, the Bible also says, has a lot to say about Christians in frivolous lawsuits. If you want to talk about your, your freedom of assembly or your free speech, or what was the other one? Uh, uh, equal protection clause. What? Th this... Go for it on every charge you've laid out, except free exercise of religion. Because, Karen, you can still pray. You can still tell people about Jesus. You Hell, you can even still use your shop to proclaim the gospel. In my living room, back here behind this wall, behind through this door, in my living room is a big bay window. My kids and I painted a beautiful stained glass cross with a shroud draped over it and a Cairo right in the middle proclaiming Christ. Anyone who walks or drives by my house sees that. You it, go get go get a window marker and write out John 3:16 on the window of your store care and you can still nobody has restricted your ministry. Nobody. So this is a kingdom issue. This is a <laughs> No pun intended, kingdom cuts. This is a two-kingdom issue. We live in the kingdom of our government, the United States, and I will say this. According to the laws of our land, you are allowed to do what you're doing. But we also live in the kingdom of the church, God's kingdom, and God tells us that he has put, whether we like it or not, and believe me, I don't like it one bit that Governor Evers is my governor. I don't like it at all. I think he's a worthless sack of crap. Of course he's a sack of crap. He's a Democrat. But that's not to say I like Republicans. I just don't like Democrats. I just want to make that clear. I'm not pro-gung-ho Republican. I just don't like Democrats. But he's still my governor. And the Bible says he was put into that office by God. And it's your responsibility, Karen, to obey your governor. Start a GoFundMe. As a matter of fact, you already did. There's any number of things that you can do, any number of ways that you can reach out and still minister to people and maybe still get a couple of bucks in donation. And people are good. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Anything the public sector can do, i.e. <clears throat> stimulus checks, the private sector can do better. You would stand to gain so much more from the charity of the people that you've served because I firmly believe one thing. I bet you you give a pretty good haircut. I bet you you make a lot of really good connections. I'll bet your store, based on the photos that I've seen, is beautiful. I bet the kids have a really good memory of being there. You do something really special. You touch these people. Is there any harm in asking for help? Does the Bible not encourage us to help each other? in times of hardship, to love and serve our neighbor? <laughs> of course it does. You had options. 
You, especially because you're a Christian, had options to reach out to the community that you've served and ask for help during this hard time when you were asked by your governor to close. You had ample opportunity to continue to minister. Your website, your Facebook page for your for your Kingdom Cuts, you, there's any number of things that you could do. You, heck, you could even host Zoom meetings with your with your prospective clients and talk all you want about Jesus. There are options available, Karen. This is not an infringement upon your free exercise of religion. It is <laughs> it, were only the Christian hair salons asked to close? No. No they weren't. But you're playing the Christian card and screaming persecution. You stand a better chance with the freedom of assembly, freedom of speech and equal protection clause. You stand a better chance with those. And the patriot in me says, go for that. Do it. Do it. Freedom of assembly. Freedom of speech. Protect, uh, uh, equal protection. Do it, Karen. But take out the religion part. Because you're not a ministry. You're a for-profit hair salon. A for-profit hair salon. And... As we've read in Romans 13, when you directly disobey your government, you're actually disobeying God. Now, let's get back to these apostles. Because, Ryan, you're being so hypocritical. You said the apostles stood up and said, uh, we must obey God rather than man. What's wrong with Miss Karenson of Kingdom Cuts? Miss Karen Karenson, what's wrong with her saying that? The religious leaders of their time and Rome flat out forbade what God has commanded, the proclamation of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus said that repentance and the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name. Rome and the religious leaders of the day forbid what God had commanded. And the apostle said, in this circumstance, we must obey God rather than man. But those same apostles, when Rome and the religious leaders came for their flesh, and came for their lives, they submitted themselves to the governing authorities and they relinquished their life. They were crucified. They were boiled. They were skinned alive. They were fed to lions. Because why? Because obey the governing authorities. They disobeyed the governing authorities by continuing to pre preach Christ crucified. Wherever they found themselves and in whatever circumstance, they preached Christ and him crucified. Even from jail, Paul would proclaim Christ and him crucified. From your couch with your laptop in hand, Karen, on your website for your kingdom cuts, on the Facebook page for your kingdom cuts, you could have still proclaimed Christ and him crucified. But I'd like to point out, Karen, your website doesn't say that you're a ministry. It doesn't say that you offer people the gospel. It doesn't say that you tell people that Jesus is their savior. It just says that you're a Christian-based kid salon focused on giving quality haircuts and making special memories for a fee. I might add, you're charging people for this because it's your business, because it's your livelihood. The service you're providing in exchange for money is a quality haircut and lasting memories. And every fiber of my being tells me you fulfill on that. I'm willing to bet you do give quality haircuts. I'm willing to bet you do provide lasting memories. But when your salon was recommended to me when I moved to the area from Green Bay, the, I looked at it and it said, oh, it's a Christian-based kid salon. Then I'm not going. Because if you have to say it, I don't want to do business with you. Martin Luther is often quoted, uh, although we don't know whether or not he actually said it, but it's a hell of a quote. Martin Luther is quoted as saying, a Christian shoemaker isn't a good Christian because he puts a little cross on every shoe. He's a good Christian because he makes good shoes. You can serve your king, Karim. You can serve your God. You don't even have to speak his name. And still, you can serve your God by giving a quality haircut and providing lasting memories to the people who, who patron your shop. The fact that you are bold enough to talk about Jesus with your patrons is admirable. I Any job I've held... I have talked about Jesus to the people that I worked with. 
I've invited people to church in every job that I've held. And I was graced by God to be in the United States Army. And it was my job to tell people about Jesus and to invite them to church. How awesome is that? This is a kingdom issue. Uh, and I don't think Karen of Kingdom Cuts understands that while she has the right in the kingdom of the civil realm in which she lives to do what she's doing, her decisions in the civil realm should be guided by the instruction from the eternal realm. And that says, don't engage in frivolous lawsuits, obey the governing authorities. If you disobey your governing authorities, you're disobeying God. Tony Evers said, all hair salons are temporarily closed. Not just the Christian ones, all of them. You didn't close your shop. You disobeyed your governing authority. And Romans 13 says you're liable to judgment for that. Because whether we like it or not, and believe me, I don't like it, God put Governor Evers in charge of the state of Wisconsin. I don't know what he's thinking, but he's God and I'm not. He gets to make that decision. I don't. I voted for the other guy. I did my civic duty. I voted for the other guy. We Christians, we'll, we'll wrap this up this way. We Christians are to be in the world, but not of it. And in, in the United States, Karen has the right to, to file this lawsuit, to claim that these rights have been violated. I sincerely hope she wins on the grounds of uh, freedom of assembly and freedom of speech. It's a little bit of a shaky one. And uh, the other one, I hope she wins on that especially freedom of assembly. I hope she wins. I hope she loses. I hope she loses. I sincerely hope she loses her religious discrimination claim. Because, Karen, you're not a ministry. Your website doesn't even say the name of Jesus. What kingdom, Karen? The kingdom of Allah? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know from reading your website. Well, okay, never mind. I take that back. Christian-based. So you're a Christian-based kid salon. Let me reread the mission statement of, of this church. The last part of it. We proudly proclaim the saving work of Jesus Christ and share his love with those who do not know him as their Savior. That's a ministry, Karen. And if you're going to be so bold in your faith, then you should probably say it on your website. Kingdom Cuts is a Christian-based kid salon, and we proudly proclaim Christ and him crucified. There you go. You might stand a chance. But Governor Evers didn't close you because you're a Christian organization. He closed you because, for whatever reason, he deemed you unessential. Who put Governor Evers in charge? God. <laughs> I don't like it, but God did it. So Christians, our closing thought... There are some corrupt governments in this world. There are some corrupt governors and, and political leaders in our own country, the United States. I don't like them. I think they're useless. Um, I, I want them out of office. But what does Romans 13 say to us, to Christians, not to the world, not to the unbeliever? For uh, It says... For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. Food for thought for you, Karen. Uh, wow, this has been a pretty. This you know this is this is the most beer that I've ever consumed. I still I'm, I'm on my first glass and I still have beer in it, but this is the most beer I've ever consumed on an episode of Luther and lemonade. And I'm still not going to finish it before the episode's done. So in closing, I know, Ooh, bump the microphone in closing. Finally, I know I'm getting to it. We're almost done. A few seconds. This coronavirus thing sucks. And it sucks for all of us. And it sucks for believers and non-believers alike. And governors, some of them have done very well. And some of them, like my governor, Tony Evers, have done very poorly. But whether they've done well or they've done poorly, we Christians 
firmly believe that they were put in their position of authority by God. Remember, Jesus said to Pontius Pilate, you would have no authority over me unless it were given to you by God. Jesus facing torture, crucifixion, and death told Pilate, your authority comes to you from God. <laughs> so, whether we like our governments or not, it is our Christian duty to obey them. Now, in, in the United States, we are free. Our, the rules set forth by these governing authorities state that we can challenge them. We have the right to, to as, do as Miss Karen Karenson is doing and file a lawsuit. Good for her. I don't think she should because I think, according to the Bible, given what we know about obeying governing authorities and frivolous lawsuits for Christians, she's making the wrong move. But uh, my, what I would advise her, tweak your lawsuit. Take out the religion part and just leave it at freedom to ass freedom of assembly, free speech, and the protection. Excuse me. I've been talking so fast I give myself the hiccups. The um, the uh, the protection clause. Stick to that. Christians, we need to be very careful in this world. We need to be in it, but not of it. And we need to ask ourselves, have our governing authorities flat out forbidden what God has commanded? And in which case we must obey God rather than man, but at the same time face the consequences for that action. Just like the apostles. They were told, don't preach Christ. They said, we must obey God rather than man, and they continued to preach Christ anyways. The governing authorities came back and said, the sentence is death. And the apostle said, fine. <laughs> they, in the end, were faithful to God and faithful to the governing authorities at the same time. I'm Ryan, and this is Lutheran Lemonade.